Good afternoon and welcome to um, another episode of Rachel Gaffney's Real Ireland. Um, we are broadcasting from the studios live here in Dallas, Texas. Um, and today is May the 22nd and outside it's 87, 88 degrees. A bit blustery, can't decide whether it's going to storm, tornado, rain, sunshine. <laughs> what, what's going on, Anna? Yes, I don't know. I, I'm very confused too. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what to dress. I don't know what to do because yeah. it's like you have plans and then suddenly nothing is happening and I'm like, but, 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 but I plan on things. Anyway. Mm -hmm. So here we are though and uh, delighted to be with you again. Um, this week we're going to be visiting my home county, which is so County exciting. Cork, known as um, the Rebel County. Did you know that? Well, Rachel, I wouldn't expect you to be from anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not from the Garden of Ireland. I'm not from the Wee County. I'm not from any of these other counties. I'm from the Rebel County. And if you'd and ask we, my husband, he'd say, <laughs> very appropriate. <laughs> right. And I love that you said we is one, one of my favorite uh, words uh, that is, means small. Yes. And Actually, uh, that county is, do you know which county it is? Which county is it? County Louth known as the Wee County. Yeah, it's a small oh, county. I small, but my, pack, packs a mighty punch, but we'll be doing a show on Louth in the future. Can't wait. But like I said, anyway, recently I was traveling home. I went to Cork and I visited Longville House. Um, but before I get to that, because go they're going to be our guests today on the show, William and Ashling O'Callaghan from Longville House in Mallow County, Cork. But before I get to that, um, I wanted to talk to you guys about something that happened last week. Quite by accident. <laughs> it's true. As everything does in this show when it goes live, anything can happen, right? Um, and we started off, um, I was talking about some crisps. So remember, in Ireland, we call them crisps. And over here, they're called potato chips. Yep. And it started this conversation or this dialogue on potato crisps. And potato crisps are sort of uh, synonymous with um, Irish crisps. Of course, now there's lots of other ones. Another one is King Crisps. There are a lot of new ones on the market, but these two are iconic and especially for the diaspora, for the Irish diaspora worldwide. So we thought we'd, um, we'd do a little poll. And the person I have to thank for this is Yvonne Gorman-Brown. I don't know if she's watching or listening today, but she was last week. And Yvonne started this thing about, you know, which was better. And some people were saying they'd have them on their sandwich and some people like them on buttered bread. But we said, was it going to be Tato or King Crisps? Okay, I'm excited. What was the uh, poll results? And the winner was overwhelmingly Tato cheese and onion crisps. <laughs> yes. And I can even tell you, I can be a little bit more um, Give me all the, all the numbers. So the data was that 70% um, of people voted oh, for wow. Tato and 30% for King Crisps. So I think we now know which is the favourite um, Irish crisp. Clearly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now that's very, very, uh, now we have all the serious uh, content out of the way. <laughs> you know, some people are checking into all sorts of, you know, new shows and they're checking into us to know about which potato crisp or which chip to eat. Um, solving but, solving hum, humankind problems. Yeah, first, first world <laughs> problems, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, sure, it's only a bit of fun, right? Um, every week I'm talking to you about Ireland, the Ireland I know, and introducing you to the people, the places and the products in Ireland um, that really and truly don't always get a look in. And uh, this week is no exception. And like I said, we're going to travel to the south of Ireland, to the county of Cork and just a little bit north of Cork. Um, maybe we'll uh, show a map and help people see and visualize where we are. So if you look there to the south where it says Cork, which again is where I'm from, and just north of Cork, you have a town called Mallow, M-A-L-L-O-W, which is where the Mallow races are held. 
and there's a beautiful Georgian property there and it's called Longville House. Do we have a photo of Longville House? There it is. Now, this Georgian property is run and owned by two of the nicest people I know, um, William and Ashling O'Callaghan, and it's a Georgian property. And just a little fact, did you know that next year, this house will be 300 years old? No way. Mm. Looks beautiful. Isn't it? Well, to tell us more about the property, and for anybody who's interested in going to Ireland, number one, going to Cork and staying in Longville, so you might have a family reunion, or you might want to take a big group and take the whole house for the night and go fishing. Oh, yeah, and... you were telling me this is possible. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I'm jumping ahead of myself there now, but I am going in September, and I'm taking a group, and so if anybody wants to join me, we're actually going to be staying in Longville House. But this week, uh, live uh, from Longville House, we have... And I'd like to welcome William and Ashling O'Callaghan. So do we have them there, Anna, on the feed? Yes, we do. Hi there. Thank Hello, Rachel. Howdy, Texas. Hello, Cork. How are you? <laughs> Delighted to be here. Delighted to be talking to you. I'm so thrilled to have you both here. And uh, full disclosure, um, I was with uh, William and Ashling. I visited with them probably just two weeks ago when I was over and I said, come on, you guys have to come on. You've got to meet the people in Texas. And indeed, the people who are watching us, I know if people are watching us all over the United States and Australia and everything. So um, uh, if you haven't, if you've been there before, if you have stayed, let us know on our Facebook live feed or on Twitter. Um, if you have any questions for them, uh, our producer Anna will be happy yes, to I'm, try and address them as well. And but by the way, hello P Pamela and Judy. They're they're on the feed right now. So uh, hello there. Hi Pam. Hi Judy. Nice to have you with us. Um, so let's get let's go straight to this and uh, let's start with um, a couple of things about the property. Um, William Ashling, uh, can one of you tell us? I said you're celebrating 300 years. 300 years of what? That property being built. You, you, I'll leave it to you. Well, the property was built in 1720 uh, by the Longfield family. And uh, the Longfield family acquired the property from the O'Callaghan family previous to that. Um, so when Oliver Cromwell came to Ireland, he took all the land and he gave it to his soldiers to reward him for the campaign in Ireland. But my granddad came back in 1938 and bought the property back off the, the family. So there's only been two families here since the 12th century, the O'Callaghan's and the Longfields. So oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. And um, and long may it continues to stay in your family, may I say. I noticed a photograph um, on Instagram recently on one of your posts. I think um, Ashling might have posted it, and if it's okay to say this, but you had an O'Callaghan family come to stay with you that were actually connected to you, and they were learning a little bit about the history, about where they're from. Were they from the United States or from Europe or no, somewhere they, like that? They were from Barcelona. So when the, when the O'Callaghan's, um, when the castle was taken off them and their lands, the chief went to Spain to fight with the King of Spain against the English to try and regain his lands. And the present chief lives in Barcelona and his daughter visited us last week and we took her down to the castle and her name is Elena, uh, which is an old O'Callaghan name. And uh, my daughter is Elena and we had photographs of the two Elenas in, uh, at the castle. Oh, that's fantastic. And I tell I would urge people to follow you on social media, on Instagram, especially you post f beautiful photographs. Um, I'd like to uh, tell people a few things about the property and things they can do there. So this is a beautiful property. How many bedrooms do you have, um, Ashling, there at Longville House? We have we have 16 bedrooms here in the main house, uh, Rachel, and we have another little property in the courtyard that's also has another five to six bedrooms. So between the two buildings, we can accommodate about 40 people. And uh, we have plenty of, um, you know, nice, luxurious uh, public areas. There's a lovely drawing room with the gorgeous welcoming fire. Uh, you know, we have um, a fabulous little green dining room. We have uh, the president's room. We have, um, oh my goodness, we have a lovely conservatory. It dates back to 1865. So there's a real sense of history. And uh, so, so those that are kind of culturally or architecturally curious, Longville House is a really lovely place to, to, um, to visit and to base yourself out of. So yeah, it's quite a sizable property. It's also nestled in 400 acres. So 
being beamed into a little place like that, it's like that's nestled in 450 acres. You have complete privacy. You have the run of the place. You have the river running through it. There's a vineyard. There's an orchard. Uh, there's a kitchen garden. So there's a lot, a lot to the property. It's quite, quite a, a unique piece. Oh, oh, for sure. And I took some photos while I was over there. Um, Anna, our producer, while you were chatting, Ashling was um, just showing your Instagram feed as well for people to see and so they can follow. Because Anna, you can see, don't they post some beautiful photos on Instagram? Yes, they were so cute. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and very oh, interesting. They're always, they're always telling stories, aren't they? I want to give a shout out, actually. Somebody messaged oh. me last night. I, met, I forgot to say, forgot to say this. I wanted to, this is a message for Ashling and William. So about two years ago, I think it's two years ago now, they're going to laugh, they're going to remember this. I got contacted by somebody who wanted to go to Ireland and his name is Jake McDorman. Does anybody know who Jake McDorman is? He does ring a bell. Mm -hmm. Is he an actor? He is and he, <gasps> he was in Limitless and he was in the remake of, um, do you remember Murphy Brown with Candace Bergen and it came back on air there this year? And he played the part of Murphy Brown's son. He was the news anchor with the Wolf Network, oh, remember? Yes. So he went to Ireland and uh, this trip was the most unusual trip I've ever done in my life. I had to do it on the fly. Ashling and William will remember this. I was messaging them on Twitter. I was in South Texas messaging and them saying, listen, can you take this guy? Can he stay? And they were full. They had a wedding that weekend. And she called me back and said, you're not going to believe this. I spoke to the bride. She said, no problem, have them come stay. William and Ashling put him up in their house and um, he has never forgotten it because he had a special love, or in Ireland we call it a graw. A graw is the Irish word for love. He had oh. a special love of their cider. Oh, I see. So last night I got a message from Jake to say, would you pass on my best to William and Ashling and how much he... He still remembers his stay at Longville, how hospitable they were. And he's now telling all of his actor friends in L.A. and everything to go to Longville House in Mallow in County Cork. So a special hello to you both from Jake. Oh, that's uh, really nice. Really yeah. And, and we don't have any photographic evidence of him with the cider, unfortunately. Oh, <laughs> if you'd given me more time, I'd probably look on Instagram or something. <laughs> oh, I don't think he'll have posted those. But he does remember it being the best sing song of his life. Um, but speaking of cider, and actually I'll go back to the house itself. I, have a, I took a photograph of the bedroom there, uh, one of the bedrooms in Longville House. Do we have a photo there of, the, of one of the bedrooms? And I've given them lots of photos, sorry. So I'm kind of picking at things out of my brain going, have you got this photo, have you that photo? But there we go. There's one of the lovely bedrooms. Um, uh, yes, isn't it lovely? Oh, I love the uh, the headboard with matching the, the top section over there. Oh, oh isn't it lovely? So uh, but it's so classic and it's traditional and it's it's tastefully done. Um, the food is is to die for in Longville House. And this is what's another unique, the, a very unique element. Do you see that fruit that I'm showing there? That looks Those are from beautiful. their garden. I don't know if Ashling and William can see this, but I, I think they're red currants. Um, have you got that yeah, photo again? Yeah, we can see those. They're red currants. Yeah, I can see black currants oh, and black currants and black currants, I think and there's some red yeah. currants red there. currants on the right in the mm -hmm. small bowl. Mm -hmm. And can you tell oh, people who are watching where you get your fruit from? Well, we get it from our garden. We have a garden, see? a walled garden, which was built in 1829. And it's um, we get all our veg and fruit all year from the garden. And we use seasonal veg and fruit, whatever is available season. Oh, I love that. It's so great. This is what's so important. And this is what makes your stay in properties like this in Ireland so special, because it's not your box top property. It's not, you know, food that's just brought in from some stores. And William himself is an incredible chef. Now, they have their own pigs there um, at Longville and they clear the land. They're natural scavengers. And then they actually... Um, the cycle of life and nature, but they butcher their pigs. And so they have... <laughs> the best pork in Ireland, and you'll have it for breakfast, a nice side of ham. I love that you just said you, they put your... <laughs> I, I, well, I've I, never injected those pigs. You've never injected them, okay, yeah. And then, um, they've, so... They've never, they've never had an injection. They never had nice. it. See, that's really important though, because people are uh, finally, thankfully, are getting more concerned about um, the provenance of their food. And um, at Longville, like I showed that fruit. I, do we have a photo of the walled garden? Um, I took a photo of their wall garden. You can go foraging. You can go off in a little woodland row. And every year, I think it's around October time, they're going to correct me here, but they do this fantastic day out where you basically get a little... Mu the, oh, that's their orchard. Nope. Yep. 
But there's one, yeah, there's yes, the sorry, entrance sorry, into the, the, the garden. garden. Yes, the garden. That's one That's of the, the entrances. The and then there's a lovely path up there where they can go. Um, don't you do um, where people can learn all about mushrooms? Oh, let's stop That's there fine. with that we photo. Yeah. I want to show That's this photo. So in the courtyard over there, the house with the, is it the blue door there, Ashling and William? Blue door. Yeah. That's the one, yeah. Yeah, huh? That's yeah, another yeah. house that's um, available. Um, you can have that entire house as well if you want. So if oh, you've that's got, awesome. yeah, so if you have family reunion or a special group and you're going fishing or golfing or anywhere, you can take the whole property. I mean, that's the way to do it because they'll create the whole bespoke experience for you. Um, nice. But uh, yeah, no, 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 it's it's incredible. Now let's go back to um, the orchards. These orchards are beautiful. Um, and William's father, uh, Lord Rest His Soul, um, planted all these orchards. And of course, when you have all these orchards, what have you got? You've got all of these apples. So um, what do you do? You know, some people say in life, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. But when life gives you apples, in this case, what do the O'Callaghan's do? They make cider. <laughs> cider. Look sure. at their Thank cider. You. So this cider, can I just say uh, for anybody listening or watching, and let's get this right. In Ireland, when you say cider, if you go into a bar and say, I'll have a glass of cider, you're going to get alcohol. We don't call it hard cider in Ireland. We just call it cider. Okay. So if you have apple juice, you just call it apple juice. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's not that complicate things. So you either have apple juice or you have cider. Those are the two options. In America, if you have cider, it's basically non-alcoholic, it's apple oh. juice. It's just it's so sweet, right? It's or just hard juice. cider. So hard cider in the United States equals cider in Ireland. So let's talk cider. And a few weeks ago when I was with them, William took me out into the orchards. And um, Anna, can we roll a little bit of film there footage of these orchards? Oh. Here we are at the orchards, uh, the back of Longville House in Mallow in North Cork. And I am here with William O'Callaghan and of course all of his dogs who followed us. Well, we just have to mute the audio because I don't know what happened there. That's so right. Uh, we were going to mute the audio because the wind was in the background. But do you see his dogs? Look at the dogs. Oh, so cute. Oh my gosh. Can William see this as we're running this footage? Yeah. Mm -hmm. William, yeah. can you see yeah. your dogs? Um, so yeah. maybe you could tell them a little bit as we're showing the footage. Um, we'll just keep showing the footage, but the dogs were hysterical. They followed us everywhere. Um, but you can see the so, trees there. Um, what kind of trees are they? These kind are, of, these are cider special cider. cider. Yeah, mm -hmm. the one your tree you're looking at there is called a Michelin, Michelin apple, cider apple tree. And the smaller tree is a uh, Dabinet. Okay. And uh, that's... So you only you have two different types of apples. So you have the Mitchell and the Davenet. So to make your cider now at this stage here, we are what May twenty second. So there, the apple blossoms are out right now, correct? Oh, they're in full blossom now. It's absolutely stunning at the moment. It's a full blossom, and the <sighs> apples are just setting on the trees. So the cycle is starting all over again, and we're going to be harvesting in October. And harvesting what in we October. do in October. Yeah, we go into the orchards and we pick all the apples. We have machinery to do it because you'd need about 30 people otherwise. And it might yes. be too expensive to buy. Um, so we go in with machinery and we harvest all the apples and we take it to the crush house, crush and press the apples to get the juice. And we put the juice into big tanks and it naturally ferments with the yeast that's indigenous to our environment. It's a wild yeast and it ferments a slow fermentation four months and then we get alcohol all the sugars are turned into alcohol and that's the cider and that's the base product then and and how many batches do you have some of it. Hmm? sorry how many, how, normally when when you do a batch every every season how how many are we looking at like how much do you Over produce like at, we're looking at sixty thousand bottles maybe a hundred thousand bottles so you wow, only wow. get one shot of it, yeah. Whereas beer people get to make beer every six weeks. We get one shot of it every year, and it's in October. Now, a couple of things you told me when I was over, which I thought is very interesting, and this is the nerdy part in me, but um, going back to provenance, and you just said you don't inject your pigs and everything. You had told me with those trees that you spray them with boron. Oh, yeah, that, that's uh, just a mineral, to, and the leaves absorb it, and it's good for... It's very good at the flower stage 
um, to spray on boron. And if you spray boron at the flower stage, you get a good apple set. Um, so that's what we do when the flowering is going on. We spray bar boron. So this is not a um, artificial chemical or anything. This is just a natural. No, so this is a, a wonderful way. Yeah. I mean, I knew that, but I just yeah. wanted to clarify for people so they know that. Um, and then also you mentioned to me you had the two trees, you had the Davenet and the Michelin apples, but you then had a row of trees in front of that and you said that they produced a sweeter juice, which you do use for your apple juice, but you said you do combine um, when you're when you're making your juice. Could you explain a little bit about the, the, the different types of apple juices yes, that you combine, please? So we take the cider apples and we use that and we, we ferment those apples to get the cider. But just before bottling, we add sweet juice into the very dry cider because all the sugars are in the natural sugars have, have been um, turned into alcohol and it's very dry. So in order to make the drink more in taste, sweeten it up with some sweet juice. So that's all that's added to the cider. We don't add any uh, nasty preservative things or, you know, ease or this or that. We just add sweet juice to bring it up into yeah. a medium palate. We don't now, spray I'm, the apple trees with um, Roundup or any glyphosate or anything like that. Okay. Now you mentioned, Anna, you mentioned earlier on about how cider over here can be very sweet. Yeah. And I'm not a cider drinker. I don't really like apple juice. Yeah, that's mean. And I don't like apple juice over here, no disrespect, because it is incredibly sweet. Now, um, when I was there last year um, in West Cork for a week, I took my sons, my husband and I took our sons uh, for a week in West Cork. My husband returned to the United States and then the boys wanted to do some fishing. So I contacted William and Ashling, and they have a ghillie there on staff. And I'm getting to this, the apple juice now. If you show that photograph there, that's Matt, my youngest son with the ghillie. And um, they were out uh, trout fishing, fly fishing. Now, I, I, for full disclosure there, that water level was very low. Ireland experienced incredible heat and so of course it had gone down a bit but they had a fantastic time now they packed a picnic for the boys do a photograph there of the app see the apple juice wow that looks so nice and that apple juice I love the color too but that apple juice is the best apple juice i've ever had i am now an apple juice drinker but only if i can drink their apple juice and i'm not just saying it because they're on the air but it's like anything else really good strawberries really good raspberries if they just taste good you don't need anything else you yeah, don't you, need that's to true. the natural you know, sugars and fruit should oh. do it God, they're, you know, an apple should taste like an apple. Um, and their apple juice tastes like apple juice. Um, and then when the two boys were finished their picnic lunch and they went back fishing again, I took a photo of James and Matthew. Do you see that photo? Can you just press hold on that for a sec? Which one? This one right there. That one, okay. So that's James on the left and Matt on the right. And the reason I want you to look at this photograph for any parents out there, can you see their hands? Can you see on the right Matthew's hands? What's in his hands? Well, it seems like fishing... Um, fishing rod in one right. and nothing in the other. Yep. And my other son, what's he doing with both of his arms? They're tucked in. In the pockets. Do you notice what neither one of them are doing? Well, they're not taking selfies. They're not I'm taking sure. selfies. They're not on their <laughs> phone. They're not um, um, interact. This was one of the best days I've had in a long time on um, my trips because those two were, one was just finishing college, the other still in college. To have my two boys just out there for the day with the ghillie, chatting with the ghillie, eating, fishing and talking. This is what it's about. This is what I'm trying to tell people. Stop trying to plan your trip, like schedule it so much in Ireland because there's, if you're on even just in Longville House alone, you've got fishing, you've got the gardens, you can go out and see the pigs. If you don't mind that they're going to end up on your plate in a few months. Um, you can, <laughs> it's, it's nature. We, we have to eat eggs and everything, That's right? True. Okay, come on, yes. people. Is but that you the can... reason why you didn't put the really cute pig photos that you had sent no, me earlier? No, they don't name their pigs, they told me. Is that oh. right, guys? Yeah, nothing has a name except the dogs. Not the say, oh. the, pig. the dog. The do <laughs> and, and you can walk their dogs, by the way. You Connie can. and all the dogs. Oh, they're mad. These dogs, they're brilliant. They'll come up to you and they want you to take them for a walk. And then oh, they have their it. own beehives there. Um, William took me to see the beehives. See them? And yeah, then they were do you put back with the honey, remember? Oh my gosh! And did they? I, I I did take some video footage, which I'll show at a later stage. Um, but yeah, they they did that for the um. They have the honeycombs in on the breakfast table. Oh wow! Um, 
Can I ask you guys, um, did you guys win an award this year for anything, by any chance, from Georgina Campbell? We did. Uh, we won a, an award for our brown bread. We have a very nice brown bread that Georgina Campbell has given us back uh, for. And uh, we won it. It's a, it's a brown bread that has some cider in it. So some people would do brown bread with, with stout, but ours has cider. So we yeah. won an award this year. And Georgina. brown bread and for people... Year, Last year, we won a silver medal for our cider in a national competition yeah. and a gold medal for our more cider, which has got a little bit of brandy in it. Mm-hmm. Now, going back to cider, we also we got make, a, we also make there it uh, is. brandy. Yeah. Look at their brandy, their Irish apple brandy, the Longville House brandy. Now, going back to the cider, the cider is now available in the United States, folks. And it is not called Longville, it's called O'Callaghan Cider. I might have a photograph of it there up in the tree again. There it is. It's my f- Do you love my photography, guys? <laughs> I'm, I must have looked like, I don't know what, I wandered out there one day with a bottle of cider and perched it between the branches and took a photo. <laughs> I'm never going to get a job as a food stylist, but there you go. I tried, right? It was just, but that cider anyway is available in the US. Now... They have an importer called Shelton Brothers and they are the importer for O'Callaghan Cider. So if anybody's looking for cider, their cider, um, it's in most states. I can't tell you which state it is in exactly, but I, from what I understand, at least 40, maybe 42 states. The good news for anybody in Texas is, and as we all know here in Texas, we are, uh, we have the TABC laws, which are very strict and it's hard, you know, uh, to get products in. But that process is almost finished. And I spoke to Nick from Shelton Brothers yesterday and he said that um, O'Callaghan cider should be available hopefully by the end of June, beginning of July in select central markets and Whole Foods. But if you want to um, check on O'Callaghan cider and the availability, I suggest you go to Shelton Brothers. They're on social media as well or we'll put up a, a, a link. Um, but I think that's worth uh, checking out the different places you can get O'Callaghan cider. I'd love to see what people do besides drinking it. I'd love to know if anybody else actually does make or cook or do anything with it. So again, if anybody wants to come with me, I'm going September the 7th to the 15th and we are spending a night with, with William and Ashling. We're not spending a night in their room, but we are spending a night in their house. <laughs> Just to clarify. <laughs> um, and they will, they, they will be welcoming us. And we, I'm sure they'll have a glass of something for us on arrival, won't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Totally. And you'll also try the brandy. So there'll be plenty to, to experience. Um, Absolutely. We'll probably make a cup of cocktail. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and a little Irish coffee. I mean, God, we, we won't invite Jake McDorman back on this trip with us, though, because there's only so much brandy. How many, um, did they say they produced? How many cider bottles? 60,000? 60, I think so, right? Is it 60,000, yeah. William? Yes, yeah, right. no. last year. Yeah, no. No, then Jake can't come back because you need some to sell. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> he's going he's gonna to kill me. He's going to send me in text. He's like, come here, you're going to make me out to be somebody who has a problem. But um, anyway... Uh, can you believe that a half an hour has flown by? He's gone very quickly, very, very quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I see you're there in that lovely uh, private drawing room back there, by the way. That room is for residents only, which is another nice little uh, reading room in the back of the house in Longville. So William and Ashling, can I just say a huge thank you? And I'm so glad we got to connect with you via Internet because it can be, as we know, dodgy at best. But um, mm-hmm. thank you very much. And people can follow thank you again you on... Longville House, L-O-N-G-U-E-V-I-L-L-E. That's Longville House. Um, we'll have links up for this. And of course, you can reshare this afterwards and it'll be on podcast and you can reach out to them. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank, thank you, Rachel. Rachel. Thank you, Anna. It's a pleasure. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, Rachel, mm-hmm. final thoughts on uh, closing the show. Yeah. So what did you think? Did you enjoy meeting them? I am and- so excited to hear more about their property because you've taken on a trip you've taken the, us on a trip yeah. um and it's just so great to see all the things that they they provide it's just pretty much just think about anything they will do it right absolutely within reason oh wow and, yeah, and within reason <laughs> and, and legal too of course <laughs> and legal Wait, legal uh, um but what no is- this uh, Basically, what I want to end the show on is this. This is what I want people to know about. These are the people I want people to meet. I want you to know about in Ireland when when visiting or before you go is to really get an insight into the Ireland that I know and love well. 
um, to take you off the beaten path and meet the, the characters. And I say characters, the people that are going to welcome you, and they're going to teach you so much about their areas. Well, hey, quick fingers here. That's I'm sorry. all right. And anyway, <laughs> until next week, it's perfect timing, actually, because next week um, we will be visiting yet another county. So tune in um, until next week. Bye, y'all. Thanks for watching.